Saltburn, available on Prime Video, is labeled as a thriller comedy. However, it could be seen more as a psychological thriller film. Directed and written by Emerald Fennell, it stars Barry Keown, Jacob Elordi, Richard E. Grant, Allison Oliver, and Roseman Pike. In a world where status and prestige are everything, Oliver Quick, a scholarship recipient at the University of Oxford and considered one of the have-nots, obsessively strives to befriend the affluent and popular Felix Catton. Amid a whirlwind of events, Oliver finds himself feeling at home with Felix and his family, but the situation between Oliver and his new friends is not as it seems. With a runtime of 131 minutes, Saltburn is a stylistic thrill ride that keeps you questioning until the very end. But before we get into the breakdown, if you enjoy movie reviews, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, hit the notification bell to receive alerts when we upload new content. Now, let's get critical. In the fall of 2006, Oliver Quick, a scholarship recipient portrayed by Barry Keown, faces challenges integrating into the prestigious environment of the University of Oxford. He soon realizes that prestige is the key social currency, especially amongst his peers like the wealthy and popular Felix Cadden, who shows empathy towards Oliver's stories about his parents' struggles with addiction and mental health. Oliver sees a chance to become part of Felix's circle, despite frequent reminders from Felix's best friend and American cousin Farley that he does not quite belong. At Felix's family estate, Saltburn, Oliver meets Felix's parents, Sir James and Lady Elspeth, played by Richard E. Grant and Rosamund Pike, along with Felix's sister Venetia and family friend Pamela. Oliver quickly endears himself to the family, but his fixation on Felix intensifies. He secretly observes personal moments between Felix and Farley and has controversial sexual encounters with Venetia and Farley, leading to complex interpersonal dynamics. As summer ends, Oliver's deception about his background is exposed, straining his relationship with Felix. After a tragic incident leads to Felix's death, Oliver implies that Farley's drug use was to blame, resulting in Farley being cut off from the family. Despite the tensions and another tragedy involving Venetia, Oliver remains at Saltburn. Years later, following the deaths of the Cadden family members, it's revealed that Oliver has meticulously orchestrated these events, including Felix's murder and Venetia's demise, to gain control of the family's fortune. In a final twist, he admits his manipulations to a dying Elspeth before securing his inheritance of the state and the family wealth. The script of Saltburn is predominantly witty and sharp, though it occasionally relies on its stylistic elements to progress certain parts of the film. The narrative effectively portrays a wolf in sheep's clothing scenario, yet some characters appear overly naive, which seems unrealistic considering the typical wariness and caution of affluent individuals about their wealth. It's common for wealthy people to conduct background checks on new acquaintances, yet the film overlooks this in its portrayal of Oliver, who is clearly out of his element but also suspiciously motivated. The plot is straightforward and decently paced, with a clear structure of exposition, development, and climax but the conclusion feels rushed, leading predictably to the anticipated twist. The film's direction complements its writing, notably with its 4-3 aspect ratio, creating a through-the-looking-glass ambience reminiscent of a fever dream. This effect is enhanced by the use of reflections and colors, invoking a Alice in Wonderland feel. Most of the movie was shot in a single location, Dryden House in Northamptonshire, England. The essence of Oliver's summer at Saltburn is aptly captured in a scene during the birthday party, as described by Farley. Fucking dream. It is an anecdote you'll bore your fat kids with at Christmas. Oliver's once-in-a-lifetime handjob on a hay bale, golden big boy summer. <laughs> you'll cling on to it, and comb over it, and jerk off to it, and you'll wonder how you could ever... Ever, ever, ever get it back. But you don't get it back. Because your summer's over. And so you, you catch a train to whatever creepy doll factory it is they make Oliver's in, and I come back here. This isn't a dream to me. It's my house. So whatever happens, I always come back. <laughs> Try harder next time, baby. It offers an insightful glimpse into an opulent lifestyle portraying a world where, in contrast to a place like Cheers, nobody knows your name. 
The movie was crafted well enough, and I enjoyed the edginess of the directing and filming, particularly at Saltburn. At times, the camera effectively conveyed Oliver's lustful gaze, teetering on the brink of pure obsession, causing scenes to linger just a little too long. The comedic aspect, however, completely went over my head. I understand the over-the-top, almost caricature-like portrayal of some roles, particularly Roseman Pike's Elspeth. However, although intentional, it seemed more like a point being made than a comedic punchline. Set in 2006, the film can be seen as an amalgamation of Cruel Intentions, Trawlbreaker, and American Beauty. It appears Fennell drew inspirations from films where obsession and excess collide in a whirlwind of events that lead our characters on a path of chaotic destruction, but in her adaptation, obsession triumphs. Despite being a decent movie, it isn't something I'd watch more than once, so I will be giving it a solid 3 out of 5 stars. Perhaps it's funnier the second time around, but I guess I'll never know.